Good morning, church, and greetings to you in Jesus' name. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Father God, we love you and adore you. We bow down before you. We proclaim you are our Heavenly Father. You are our God, and we are your people. And previously, we couldn't have come and addressed you as our Heavenly Father, but you made it possible by including us in your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord. Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Um, and you were buried and on the third day raised, all in accordance with Scripture. Seen by many witnesses, you instructed your disciples and you uh, ascended into heaven and you poured out the Holy Spirit upon your church. Today you intercede for your church, you're preparing a place for your church. In the future you're coming back for your church that we might be where you are and we might be uh, with you and like you. And uh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the seal of warranty, that we are the purchased possession of God. And we thank you that you lead us and you guide us, you remind us of the things of Jesus uh, Christ, our Lord, and you help us when we don't know quite how to pray in line with God's will. Today we ask that you will open the eyes of our understanding, that we might gain a good understanding as uh, the purpose of the church, uh, as we uh, look uh, in the next session about how to join the church. And uh, we ask that you will uh, open our eyes of understanding. Uh, we ask, Lord, that we might know God better and we will love him deeper and serve him faithfully under the end. We ask all this. Uh, for uh, your name's sake, O oh God, and we ask all this for your glory, O oh God, and we ask this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at membership series, and today we are continuing the membership series. We have looked at uh, the Universal Church, we have looked at the local church. Uh, today, uh, I thought of doing actually, why join a, uh, a local church? But before we do that, it's good for us to uh, um, know whose is the church and what is the church for uh, from his point of view. So first question is, uh, whose is the church? We know very clearly from Jesus' statement, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So the church belongs uh, to God, the church is built by Jesus Christ. We also know that the word church, ecclesia, means gathered uh, 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 people called out, called out uh, from the world unto himself to be exclusively his people or his family and uh, called out of darkness to light, from slavery to freedom uh, and uh, to live for him and live for his glory. So the church belongs to him. So who's the church? The church, you know, is his. Uh, in Ephesians, Apostle Paul says, uh, husbands, love your wives, uh, just like Christ loved his church and gave himself for her. And Apostle Paul writes in another place, he says, you are not your own, you've been bought with a price. In another place he writes, I glorify God, uh, in, with your body. So it's important to realize that we are here uh, primarily, uh, the church is his and uh, it is for his glory uh, that the church exists. We also looked at the church exists by the imperium of Jesus. It doesn't exist by the permission of the state, it doesn't exist by human will, but by the divine plan and purpose. You'd find that in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, where Apostle Paul writes and says, uh, God had planned all this um, before the foundation of the world, that we might be uh, blameless, holy and blameless before him uh, in love in Christ Jesus. So this is what the church is there uh, to, uh, to glorify God. The church belongs to Christ and belongs to God. So that is very, very important. Number one. So what is the church for? Uh, to help us understand that, I'm going to look at 
three things that Jesus spoke uh, regarding love. And what we're going to do is we'll look at that. And then we will also look at some common objections that people raise as to why they don't want to join a local church. When I say they, I'm talking about Christians. Uh, some Christians think that they can be uh, lone rangers and they don't need a local church. Uh, they don't want to trouble the local church or they feel that local church is too faulty, etc. So we look at those objections as we close and then we'll conclude. So the three dimensions of love that I would like to talk about is um, first and foremost uh, is uh, one day Jesus was asked by some scribes and Pharisees. They wanted to catch him out and they were, they were very clever people. They wanted to catch him out. So they came and asked, of all the laws of the uh, of the Torah, uh, which is the most important? I, I, apparently, there's 613 laws. And he's asking which one is the most important one, and you'd find that this is recorded for us in Matthew chapter uh, 22. Let's see whether I can lay hands on that. Just bear with me, and uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 22. And you'd find that in verses 34 to 40, you'll find this. Um, when the Pharisees heard that he had, silent, uh, he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. If you ever came to Cornerstone Church, as you enter the foyer, you find a banner in which uh, these words are written there. Uh, as a community, we worship, we fellowship, uh, we do discipleship, we do stewardship, and do we do uh, evangelism or mission. So this will be written there. So uh, the Jesus, uh, the first dimension of love is God word, uh, which is uh, loving, which is worship, loving God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind or might. Uh, that is worship. So the church exists primarily to worship God. You know, uh, worship is uh, uh, is uh, holy. Uh, we are called to be a holy people, and as a holy people we come, we are exclusively His. And remember, uh, everything we do, uh, we do it in His name, and we do it uh, for His glory. Apostle Paul writes that in his letters. Uh, so we are here to do uh, worship, primarily. Our second dimension is, uh, is in the same uh, uh, passage of Scripture, uh, in verses 39, uh, which says, he says, second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commands depends all of the law and the prophets. Uh, in the Old Testament times, or during Jesus' times, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible was divided just into two major sections. Uh, one was called uh, the law and the other one was called uh, the prophets and he says the whole thing is about loving God uh, and loving your neighbor. This is the whole essence of the uh, the pressy or the puree uh, of the entirety of this. On these hangs uh, the entirety of the law and the prophets. So this loving your neighbor is loving the world. Uh, so how do we love the world? Jesus said this in his uh, Sermon on the Mount that we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. He said uh, we are like a lamp on a lampstand or like a city on a hill uh, to be seen. And he said by your good works that uh, uh, people will glorify uh, God in heaven. Uh, that may not necessarily happen in this side of the equation, but there will be people will acknowledge ultimately why uh, we are doing what we are doing. Um, so let, let's see, there are two elements uh, of um, loving your neighbor. One is the practical element 
and one is a spiritual element. And both go hand in hand. Practical element is doing acts of kindness. When you see somebody in need, if it is within your capacity, then uh, the instruction is clear that we need to be like that Samaritan who helped other person in need. Obviously, if it's outside your capacity, uh, then you don't have to feel guilty. But if it's within your capacity, uh, do what you need to do and what you can do. Okay, that's one. Number two uh, is the, the, the spiritual element, which is you're not only just giving them a, a practical hope, but you're also giving them a living hope. The living hope is preaching the gospel. Because ultimately, uh, all your good works is not going to save anybody, but preaching of the gospel will save somebody because the gospel of God is the way that God had created and in which the power of God exists in order to convert a soul. So both these are uh, important. So the church exists firstly for worship and secondly for evangelism or mission. Keep that in mind. The, the next one is Jesus also gave them gave his, uh, his disciples a new commandment. That new commandment, you'll find that in John chapter 13 and in John chapter 15. In John chapter uh, 13, uh, he uh, says, um, if you look at verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give you, uh, you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all the people will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. This is at the tail end of Jesus' ministry and Jesus is going to face the passion and the disciples have followed him. There is a lot of strife when they hear that he's going to uh, face his passion. They want to know who will be the greatest. There's lots of jostling for power and authority. Who's going to be the next uh, leader of this group, etc. But actually Jesus actually... Uh, is uh, saying love one another and how did Jesus love his church in Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians uh, he says the, the church at Ephesus he says what does he say he, he calls on husbands the husbands love your life uh, love your wives uh, as Christ loved this church and he gave himself uh, for it so he laid down his life so the church is here in a local congregation we need to endeavor uh, to serve one another uh, with and uh, love is evidenced in action love is evidenced in kind words love is evidenced in good behavior uh, there's both gentleness and respect in the way we conduct ourselves again in john 15 uh, in verse 12 he says this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you and he says greater love has no one than this than someone lay it down his life for his friends Verse 17, it says, these things I command you so that you will love one another. Uh, this, is, this is inward. So your first one was Godward, and the second one was outward, and the third, word, third one is inward, in that order. Godward, outward, inward. So let's look at that, remind ourselves very quickly. Godward is worship, and uh, outward is evangelism and uh, humanitarian uh, service. Uh, so that is the uh, second one. And the third one is uh, love within. So this comes under the banner of fellowship. This comes under the banner of discipleship. And this one comes under the banner of stewardship. We said the church belongs to God. Because the church belongs to God, that is why uh, and we are called to do this. And not always the world understands what we do. Uh, and some people think the church is irrelevant uh, in the world uh, to today's society. Because we are not doing it for them and they're not going to understand this because God has called us to be exclusively his, a holy people. And whatever we do, we are doing it for, for him, uh, for his namesake, for his glory. Therefore, the world uh, sometimes does not understand what we are doing. Uh, it might even sound quite crazy that we come and stand, uh, we sit, uh, we stand and sing songs, we stand and uh, read the scriptures. Uh, we love one another, we give 10% of our income or more or less away uh, to the furtherance of the uh, ministry and to support one another uh, and to support the work of the ministry. 
So yeah, so much, so much is uh, uh, practiced and it, it can be quite strange. And we get excited about the moment uh, when a, a new uh, disciple is added to the body and uh, we baptize them in water. That's again a strange practice. Well, it does not understand all this, but we're not doing it for them. We are doing it for God. And uh, so the three dimensions is worship. Uh, the second one is evangelism. Uh, and the third one is uh, the three things I said. It is uh, fellowship, it's discipleship, it's stewardship. So uh, keep those things in mind, okay? And uh, that is uh, loving God with all your heart, loving your neighbor, and loving yourself. Three points for what we said is uh, Godward, uh, outward, and inward. So let's keep that in mind. Now I'm going to just deal with a few uh, questions, um, common objections that people say why they don't want to, Christians um, sometimes say they don't want to join a local church. Um, some Christians uh, are like lone rangers. They feel, I don't need anybody. I'm perfectly uh, capable of running my lives. When you're born again, when you're born anew, you are not just born from above, born of God, but you're born into his family. So to say, I love God, uh, but I reject his family. Let me give you an analogy. Um, uh, I have got uh, two sons. They are grown up uh, men today. Uh, imagine if my older son comes and says, Daddy, I love you. And uh, I love you very much. You are so special. Uh, but I hate my younger brother. I hate mommy. <laughs> we said that. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? So uh, I not only want him to love me, uh, but I also want him to love my, uh, my family. So similarly, God wants you to love your other siblings uh, who are in the family. Uh, and they come from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. They may not look like you. They may not speak like you. They may not eat like you. They may not dress like you. They may not share the same uh, uh, hobbies as you or same interests as you. But there's one thing that we share, that is we belong to God. Okay, so uh, it's important uh, that uh, you can't be a lone ranger. Uh, you need to be part of a, a family. So if that's you, I my message to you is uh, that uh, stop being a lone ranger, uh, find a local family and uh, submit to the local family and uh, come under the, uh, uh, come under that uh, shared life of that local family. Okay, here's another objection you might say. There are local churches around me. They are not perfect. Okay, now here's another analogy. In the olden days, in one city, there was only one church, or in one town, there was only one church. And imagine uh, Corinthian church. Uh, there was divisions there. There was disorder in worship there. There was uh, disorder in family life and in terms of uh, sexuality uh, and in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, using of the gifts in terms of a misunderstanding about the doctrine of death and resurrection all this was there so much division and confusion there imagine you were in Corinth and you were born again uh, you have a choice but that's the church did Jesus disown Corinth no he, he did Apostle Paul disown Corinth no no he fought for uh, the correcting of the church and the well-being of the church. There's no church that will be perfect because we are all a work in progress. Uh, some people are uh, ahead in their journey. Some are new in their journey. Some take a bit longer to change. Uh, some are quick to change. But the important thing, this is not an excuse for us to behave badly. This is not an excuse for us to uh, live how we want. No, we have to live and do church uh, in an orderly manner that reflects uh, God's glory, okay, and God's character. So the church is here uh, to reflect the character of God and to demonstrate to the world what is it to be uh, to uh, uh, to be uh, 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 living under Him as your King. Uh, so there was a number of uh, different things uh, that uh, that that uh, you have to take into account and to live uh, and be part of a local church. You can always. Uh, so what happens today? Uh, today we are within 
uh, driving distance, probably if you're living in a city in the United Kingdom, you're within driving distance, maybe you're 40 churches uh, in, in, a, in a city, but if you're in a, a village and it might be different, uh, but yeah, you're within a driving distance of so many, you have a choice. So how do you choose a local church? Number one is if the church is true to the gospel, if they proclaim the gospel, if they uh, live that separated life and they teach and, may, and make disciples, then that is a good church. It doesn't matter whether they're people of your age group uh, or not, uh, whether they're all older people or younger people, or those things are secondary. Uh, you are family and you, you have to love one another. Jesus very expressly says, if you don't show that love, and, you know, Apostle John in, uh, in his epistle, he says, if you can't love your brother whom you see, how can you love God you can't see? So it is important to demonstrate that love. God is love. Okay, so that's important to keep that in mind. Another objection, um, the church does not cater to my needs. Uh, so, um, you know, you got to, we can be, uh, yes, uh, it's important that, to a certain extent, it's, it's, it's valid. Uh, in another extent, it's not right because you can become consumerist in your outlook. You can become like a customer. What can it do? But here we come as a church uh, to build one another up. We come as a church to encourage one another. Okay. Now, having said that, now I say, uh, uh, why uh, uh, join a local church? Because it's a God's idea that we must do uh, Christian life together. Remember, uh, God is one, but God is also community. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, similarly, uh, he wants his children uh, to live in a community as the people of God. So with these words, I just want to say, love God with all your heart, love your neighbor, and love each other within the body of Christ. And we are all here uh, ultimately uh, for the glory of God. Uh, keep that in mind. And if you've not joined the church, uh, go and meet the leadership of the church and say, what does it mean to join a lo your local church? And they will have a, a few other practical uh, outlining of details, which we will look through in this series, um, God willing. So we pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to explore uh, the three dimensions of love as to why your church exists here. We thank you firstly, the church is yours and we are yours. And we want to love you with all our hearts, uh, with all our soul, with all our mind and might. Lord, we want to love our neighbor uh, like we love ourselves and we want to love each other within the body of Christ. Uh, all this is not possible in our own strength, so we ask that you will supply us with all the grace that's necessary to pursue this walk as your holy people uh, together and to do that shared life. And uh, we thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, God bless you and keep you and have a wonderful week.